Hello, everybody. This is Kelly Kleiman, and you're listening to the DealershipNews.com podcast. It's Friday afternoon. We cover the who's happening in the automotive industry, and today we're discussing how to increase your profit margins using a company called Max Digital. I'm going to approach this interview from a slightly different angle and let our guest explain in detail at his own pace, how a dealer can profit more with his company. And I say this with a sense of urgency because all of the indicators are pointing to a downturn in sales in the auto industry and profit will be needed to be found in every nook and cranny of a dealership. Patrick McMullen, welcome to Dealership News. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I love to ask this question first, and it's basically a lot of us just fall into the industry and we stay here. What got you into the automotive industry? Was it something you've had a lifelong interest in, or did you, again, just happen to stumble into it? Um, stumbled into it, actually. So out of college, I, I had my degree in speech pathology. So I thought I would be a speech pathologist my whole life. And um, uh, from there, I decided that wasn't the path I wanted to go. So got my degree. I was probably six months away from getting the degree. So I got the degree anyways and uh, just kind of jumped into the business world. And right out of college... Like a lot of uh, college graduates, I worked at Enterprise Rent-A-Car, knowing nothing really about cars. I did the same. uh, (laughs) What's that? I actually worked at Miller Car Rental, which was the competitor of Enterprise. Funny. Okay. (laughs) Yes, I was in Florida and worked for Enterprise. I was actually there for four and a half years out of college, which is like a lifetime at Enterprise. And... so I got to meet a bunch of dealers because the, you know, the retail side of that business is only about 10%. Everything else is body shops and dealerships. So I, I met a, a bunch of dealers and one of my dealers was CarMax was one of my, uh, was one of my customers and, um, became friendly with those guys there and they recruited me. So then I worked at CarMax as a buyer. So that's really where I learned, um, the automotive industry where, you know, I was going out to auctions, buying cars, appraising cars, running, the used car operations um, for that store in Tampa. At that time, we were selling 400 cars a month, and this was, you know, a really long time ago. Um, but they had the process down, learned that, and um, from there, the way I kind of fell into Max Digital was I, I had a friend that worked at CarMax. He had moved to Chicago, had a job as an account executive, and we were talking on the phone one day, and I was I was looking for something new after a few years and. Uh, they were actually looking for an account executive in, in Florida. And I uh, came up on a Friday, interviewed, and um, had an offer letter by the time I landed. And that was 11 years ago this uh, this February. Well, congratulations on that anniversary. T- tell us about Max Digital. How long have you guys been maximizing profits for dealers? And, and who was your first client? Yeah, great question. So um, Max Digital, as it is today, was actually uh, founded in 2011. But the story goes a little bit deeper than that. Um, it, we were born out of, a, a, out of our previous company, which was First Look. And many people might know of First Look as one of the pioneers in the inventory management space. So your appraisal, your pricing, your stocking, that was founded about 15 years ago um, by Pat Ryan Jr., uh, who's founded both companies. And what we learned from that was, you know, we had this, this great inventory management solution, and we created a, a product um, called Max Ad. And from there, we found that you know, dealers love that, but if they already had something in place to appraise and price cars, um, we, weren't, we weren't really selling it that well. So we split the companies apart and in 2011, and Max started growing like, like, like a weed. We actually won in 2014. We were named the third fastest growing software company in the United States by Inc. 500. So we we're you know, re- still and you know, really proud of that. So in 15, we brought the companies back together um, under, the, under one company. So we still have First Look. First Look is still one of our, our core products now. It's not mm-hmm. its own business. Um, and so it's kind of all under that umbrella of Max Digital. So it's a, and I was, like I said, 11 years um, now the Senior Vice President of Strategy for the company. So I've, I've seen from you know, the, the early stages all the way to where we are today and everything in between. And it's been a, it's been a wild ride, but a great ride at the same time. So, so this, uh, this next question will be easy for you to answer. Usually people stumble on it for some reason, but everyone has an elevator pitch. Uh, but for the GM or president of a big dealer group who doesn't know who you are, what would a 30-second elevator pitch sound like? No reading from a script. Three, two, <laughs> one. Give me 30 seconds. 
<laughs> so if I was trapped in an elevator with a with a GM or president of the company, which has happened before, <laughs> um, the, the message that I'd want to get through to him is, you know, basically Max Digital it's an end to end solution that it, it really helps dealers at every touch point of that that retail process. So from acquiring cars to pricing to merchandising, and then ultimately selling the car to a customer. Um, you know, not only do we help the managers at your dealership. Um, put the right number on a car, whether it's at the appraisal or at, at the auction, and find the right cars for your needs. But you know, with pricing analytics, put the right price on the car so you can drive that traffic online to your store. And when that customer shows up, unfortunately, a lot of times because of all the research they do, they know more about the car they're coming to buy than your salesperson does that's trying to sell it to them. So we level the playing field with some of our technology to really turn that salesperson into an instant expert on every piece of inventory on their lot um, and ultimately sell a car to a customer the way they want to buy it. So that, is that under 30 seconds? Did I hit it? Uh, yeah, that was over 30 seconds. Um, and oh, was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you're okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so when you walk into a dealership, what does your checklist look like in regards to assessing their needs? Yeah, so that's you know something that um, we work with on with our account executives on a daily basis. So I, I think it really depends on you know where the customer is in their life cycle as a as a customer of ours. So if it's a if it's a new customer, you're really going in and you're looking at the the complete health of their pre-owned operations. Um, so you know how what's their appraisal process? What's their pricing strategy? Mm -hmm. What is their acquisition strategy? Um, how do they how do they merchandise online? How do they sell a car to a customer? And based upon the findings that we get, you know, initially from our implementation team or from the account executive that's in the field and consulting with that dealer, we, we put plans of actions together based upon you know what what their goals are and what what we've found you know that have that's been successful with other customers, um, and then put them on a put them on a plan for the first 90 days. And then check in, you know, weekly to make sure that they're they're hitting their goals. If it's a current customer that's that's you know after implementation, they they might be on it for a little while. Um, you know, we work with our customers every week, every month, and at that point, it really becomes, you know, what are the things that they're lacking in, or what are the things that um, that they need help in. So, I mean, it could be you know things from maybe their maybe their turn they're not turning fast enough. So looking at pricing strategies and looking at merchandising strategies. So, you know, so every, every month we have um, these meetings with, with the group heads at each dealership to, to look at. And we have a ton of analytics inside of our platform that, you know, help them manage from top down. So, you know, not only is it working with the management staff to make sure that they're, you know, looking at the right things, because as you know, inside of a dealership, there's a thousand things that happen at any given day. So identifying the needs and then working with the people on the ground to make sure that you know they're they're executing effectively um, to do that. And one of the things that that we're working with customers on right now, and you said it in the opening around profits and how they're being squeezed, and you know not just in the future, but you know we've seen it over the last couple of years, especially with the in, influx in um, in inventory, um, where you know we work with our customers. We have a um, we we have a workshop called Stop the Drop, and what what that does is it is it looks at when that customer comes in. We've fundamentally have changed the way that we price our inventory as a as a industry. Everybody, for the most part, when I do speaking engagements, whether it's NADA or digital dealer, you know, I ask the question, who has an inventory management solution and who buys into market based pricing? And almost every hand goes up. So we've fundamentally changed that way. But when the customer shows up to our lot. We're still selling cars like we were 30 years ago, and so our margins aren't there, and we're still negotiating to get the deal done. So, you know, teaching them how to, you know, sell the quality and value, and use pricing proof points to show the customer that it's a fair price. Um, that's one of the things that that we've been working with our customers on for the last year and a half, um, and going forward to to help them because, as you said, you know, the margins aren't there, and especially the way that we price now online. Um, it's kind of that race to the bottom where we're jumping the person below us by a hundred bucks just to try to gain that customer's business, but we don't sell it differently once they show up to the dealership. So that's one of our biggest initiatives that we're doing right now. 
That was an outstanding answer to that question. Maybe the best answer I've had, the longest, but the best answer I've had to that question. <laughs> it's all those, you, you. You, you, there's a range of important issues there. Talk to us about Max Ad. Get me excited about Max Ad. Yeah, so like I said early on, the, um, the, our Max Ad product was the first one that we built after First Look. And what we found was that there was a need in the industry for people to advertise their cars differently online from a listing perspective, from the ad description perspective. And so instead of just using a generic VIN explosion like a lot of dealers do, mm -hmm. or using what we call dealer speak. So floor mats so clean you can eat off of them. Or you know, do you like fruit? This one's a cherry. That doesn't sell the car to, <laughs> to a consumer. Okay. So what we, what we do with Max Ad is we take all the most consumer relevant information about that car. So the pricing validations, the CPO information, OEM specific options and packages, uh, expert reviews and awards, uh, vehicle history reports, and we put that into an ad description online, whether it's autotradercars.com, any third party site, or the dealer's website, and and help the dealer stand apart from the from the rest of the pack and, and really you know, mer merchandise the car online um, and answer those questions that consumers have about that car and, and really get them excited about the car to do business with that dealership um, because we know that they're starting their used car search online. So why aren't we putting our best foot forward when at, at the place that a customer is actually finding us? What does your merchandising platform look like? So. Our merchandising platform, it's actually uh, it's, it's two pieces of that. Um, we, everything that I just said about the Max ad, we repurposed that into um, um, kind of a, a VDP page that mm -hmm. goes on the customer's website uh, or on the dealer's website. And so we take that same information, but then we expand on it. So if the car has you know, a cold weather package or tech package or sport package, it just doesn't say that it has that. We actually explain what's in that and bring back all the relevancy from when that car was new. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what did it cost three years ago when somebody bought that car brand new? Um, you know, sport package maybe three thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So we're building value in the car and and taking all that same stuff from the pricing to the CPO and putting it on a into a more consumer friendly format that the customer can see on the website. But then also when they show up to the dealership. Like I said, the, the, the customer usually knows more about the car they're coming to buy than the salesperson does is trying to sell it to them. And that's, that's a lot of times just a sheer number of vehicles that they have on their lot. And at their turn, they just can't be an expert. If you're a BMW guy and, and you're trying to sell a, a Chevy Tahoe, you might not know anything about a Chevy Tahoe. So what we do is we turn that salesperson into an instant expert, whether it's on their desktop or on their phone, so they can speak intelligently about the car and build that value and, and level that playing field. But then the ultimate thing that comes out of that um, from the merchandising platform is holding that gross. So if I could show you that you know, you're, it's $1,000 below the market, it's $1,500 below an ADA, and it's got $7,000 worth of OEM packages on it, and it's a Carfax One owner, and it's certified, and you ask me for a $1,000 discount, I have proof now, I'm using evidence to come back to you to, to hold my price. Right, and we right. have a ton of dealers that, that, that use that practice and they see great success from it. I think that's great. I think that's a great approach. How does your, um, how does your analytics platform work? I see it focuses on four specific dashboards. Uh, you've touched on it a little bit. I happen to be a big analytics guy. I love dashboards, uh, especially <laughs> ones that are easy to read. Uh, there's a lot you could draw from them if you know how to. Uh, explain to us yeah. a little bit about that. So, our analytics dashboard, you know, we, we do focus on four, four key areas of uh, a dealership's online performance. So uh, time to market, that's a big hot button. You know, it's, it has been for the last you know, two years in the marketplace. The faster we can get our cars online and merchandise in price, the more opportunities we have to sell it. So looking at a dealer's time to market, looking at their online classified performance. So, you know, what is the return on investment on AutoTrader or Cars.com? Um, compared to their spend. What are they getting for that? Um, different classified trends and then uh, website traffic. So what type of traffic are you getting? Where is it coming from? And so that would be kind of your external focus. You know, wh where are people finding you? But then we have a ton of analytics. And I think one of the things that, that, that we do 
um, better than anybody else, and, and, and some, some people don't do this, is we have a wealth of data. Um, so we actually pull from dealers' DMS systems. So we know everything about the health of your store, and we can, we can drill down into specific analytics about you know, um, your, your, your DMS data, so your sales history, your sales turn, you know, what, what cars actually perform well for you at your store, and not just looking at the market, but looking at the market and your history to, to make the dealership you know, the, the best that it can be. So depending on what you're managing from a day-to-day -day basis, um, you know, our analytics, they're, it's, it's, it's uh, world-class. Question, do you have, a, uh, do you have access to real-time data for other dealers? In other words, you have, let's say, 20, 20 clients, 20 dealerships, but do you have access to the entire market's data so you know what the competition was selling and model make and, and price? Um, not, obviously not from the DMS. If, if they're a customer of, uh, of Max Digital, then right. you know, we would have right. that okay. DMS data. But from, from, the, you know, from, the, from the technology that we've built to go out and look at the marketplace and look at you know, what's out there, Yes, we do have algorithms that look at um, you know, uh, market day supply in whatever market you may be in, not only just um, you know, by make model, but also by, by trim level too. So you know, a dealer can look at his stocking needs, for example, and see you know, what is my core competencies that I need, mm -hmm. and then what do I fill those additional holes with um, for what's turning fastest in my marketplace. So it's, it's kind of a combination of both. So, I mean, at any given time, we have over, over 6 million bin listings running through our system mm -hmm. that dealers have access to, to to drill down. And, I mean, you can go as far out as you want or you can drill down, you know, to your backyard. So it's, it's, it's um, very customizable on how you can slice and dice the data, whether it be your own or the markets. So, so you have enough marketing intel where a dealer can actually <clears throat> understand what percentage of the market he's, he's dominating. That and also, you know, with um, in his area, with polk data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with with polk data, you know, looking at you know sales trends and all that. Yeah, we incorporate that all that into our uh, into our system. So, you know, there's multiple different avenues that they can that they can see that data from. Why don't you throw a couple of case studies at us? And, and what can a dealership expect when you bring them the program in, let's say, a, a ninety to one hundred and twenty day period, as you mentioned earlier? Yeah. So. I mean, you know, over the years, there's there's so many. I, I forgot to mention early on some of the some of our early mo most early customers, and you know, we work with the some of the biggest out there. We have uh, Hendrick Automotive. They've been on. Mm -hmm. They were one of mm -hmm. our, our first customers. Liffey Automotive came on in 2006, mm -hmm. um, and they're growing they're growing uh, you know pretty rapidly. Uh, Hen um, Penske Automotive, just to name a few. But um, I think one that that is going to be hitting our website pretty soon, a video testimonial from NADA. It's a 26-store uh, group out of, um, out of the Midwest, out of Minneapolis. Uh -huh. And they sold over 30,000 used vehicles last year, and, which is staggering in itself. <laughs> but the, even the, the bigger thing behind that is <clears throat> their average discount per customer transaction over those 30,000 cars was only $110. Um, so you know, we're really proud of their success and what we could do to help them with that. And I have many different, you know, many other case studies like that um, from East Coast to West Coast where, you know, dealers, you know, not only are they turning cars faster, but holding that gross and stopping that drop and making sure that they're building the quality and value and using those pricing proof points to not discount because we're already discounting to get the customer in our door. Why, why are we discounting again to close the deal? Why aren't we selling it? you know, and building that value in it. So, um, you know, we're really proud of the success of our dealers that have, um, that have done that. That's an outstanding answer to that particular question. Whenever I ask for case studies, I don't always get them. Quite frankly, I don't get good ones. Where will Max Digital <laughs> be in five years, and what do you guys have in R&D that we should all be getting really excited about? Jeez, if you asked me when I started, you know, where it would be in five years, I, I would have no idea because it was growing so fast. Um, but I think now, you know, being a, a more mature company, you know, we, we have a very good vision of where we want to be as a company. And I, I think 
where that's going, that's coming out of our R&D um, side of the house, is around the sales process. So if you think about inventory management, it's, it's somewhat of a commodity these days. Everybody uses it, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I talked about how we price, and I talked about, you know, we're pricing differently, but we're not selling differently. Um, one of the products that we have, excuse me, one of the products that we have um, that we're actually rolling out right now um, is called Path to Purchase. So it's, it's really taking that, that old traditional 12-step program that a dealer has hanging in their, in their conference room or in their break room, and it's, it's changing that, and uh, it's, it's, not, it's not forcing the customer through a process that the dealer wants to do. It's selling a car to a customer the way they want to buy a car. So we've taken our digital showroom technology and expanded upon that, and from a lot of research that we've done, is we've really whittled that down to you know, five different things. So helping the customer uh, with the salesperson identify the vehicles that, that are right for them, and you know, doing a virtual walk around and getting them excited about the car, experiencing test driving it, starting the appraisal process earlier, and, and using technology um, as evidence to, to back up your appraisal, and then using what we call you know, closing sheets, if you will, um, that are electronic to repackage all that great information about the car and present it to a customer um, using technology, whether it's iPads or desktops, and you know, managing that, that sales operating system, if you will, and, and getting a customer in and out of the door a lot faster. And that's what our dealers are starting to see. Is I just rolled this out um, to a store in Indianapolis, one of our Penske stores, and I got immediate feedback from the salespeople. And um, the feedback wasn't necessarily that it was easier. They couldn't believe that the customers responded to it so well. And one customer actually said, this is the way car buying should be. And, you know, we've heard that on commercials before and stuff like that, but oh, to yeah. hear a customer actually say that to where it wasn't a hassle, to where it was a, a, a enjoyable experience, um, that means a lot to us because we've worked really hard to do that. And so that's where we're taking the company. We're still going to have our core, our core um, you know, products, but I see the future with us, you know, helping dealers um, minimize that sales process and, you know, really put the, put the salesperson on rails and, and help them do it quicker, faster, and easier. Outstanding. Outstanding, and thank you very much. Folks, Patrick McMullen, Max Digital. For you dealers who need to maximize profits, this is the guy you want to call. He knows his stuff. That was a great interview. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for joining us. You're listening to Kelly Kleiman, dealershipnews.com podcast. It is a Friday. I just did a double letter of podcasts. I'm very excited about it, and and uh, again, thank you to Patrick McMullen at Max Digital. Talk to you all soon. Have a great weekend, everybody.